Dungeon learn how I'm actually eating while we're doing this. Fantastic. Erica, how's it going? Many, thank you so much for tuning in. Um and also Stacy, good to see you here. Guys, obviously we're slowly oh wait a minute, this is the last day of the month, right? If you're in Australia, this is the last day of November. I hope all the men are all shaved. Um it's a time when you wish you had invested in Gillette shares. You know why? Because everybody will be buying a razor today. So all of those people that um, picked up and contributed to Movember, thank you all so much. And those that participated, you did well. All right. Nauti, thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So my name is Prosper Tarovinga. And um, obviously every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, we sit around here and we talk about how to make your business profitable and enjoyable. I see Ed is in the house. Manny, thank you so much. Jason, what's happening, dog? All right, so it is my belief, obviously, for those that are just tuning in, that um, if you're running a business online, you should basically be profitable um, in it while running it and also enjoy, um, you know, um, working in it and providing the service or the goods that it is that you provide so that's the reason why every single day at 2 p.m aest we sit around here and we talk about uh you know this simple four step uh strategy that is designed for digital um entrepreneurs like yourself so that you can uh package and brand um your services uh to make your business profitable and enjoyable i see ng is in the house thank you so much for tuning in and today we're talking mainly about connecting how to have authority within your niche how to brand your business the community around the work that you're doing uh building loyalty and ambassadors and also creating relationships with the people that you're bringing into your work uh, onto your website or to your social media I see Emma has just tuned in. Thank you so much for uh, joining us on this Lunch and Learn. Sandy Walker, it's a pleasure to see you here today. I hope it's going to be a fantastic show for you right there. All right. So in essence, I help small businesses like yourself to actually grow using digital marketing strategies and i will help you to actually curate an online footprint um and optimize your business especially for growth and for profit so i will be helping you to build systems in your business and um, so that your business operates on autopilot now one of the things that brings people or that brings um you know um you know customers or leads to our businesses is how we have crafted our personal brand okay our brand for the business is what um you know attracts other customers or other people to want to do business with us because people as we know like to do business with those they know like and trust so if you can type in the comments there if you're watching right now tell me what is it that you're doing to get people to actually know who you are to get people to trust your brand and to get people to like you all right can you just let me know i want to know the type of people that i'm dealing with here what are you doing for people to know you like you and trust you within your business all right so if you if you're running a a, a, a business out there just let me know so that i have a bit of an understanding of how it is that you're doing um what you're doing because at the end of the day let's not kid ourselves in today's competitive marketplace you've got to do things differently if you really want to stand out from the crowd 
right? You you are gonna need a system that's gonna guide you through you know this whole process of building and 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 growing your own profitable online business. All right. So that's why I designed the online prosperity blueprint, which has all these aspects of you know marketing such as your lead generation uh, social media marketing um, email marketing content strategy and all the other things and especially the six ways um, that I'm gonna be talking about for you to be personable within your brand because let's face it if people don't like you if people don't know who you are there's no way you can convince somebody who doesn't respect you in your own way of thinking all right now Sandy says being honest being um, open and being authentic Absolutely, because people want to understand where is their money going, all right? Lately, I don't want to lie, I've got a three-year-old girl, uh, uh, she's, she's almost a teenager actually, and um, every day on the news, not that I follow the news or anything else, uh, but we always hear about some person out there who's bombed people, who's probably raped people, and then when they ask or has shot 500 people now can you imagine if my daughter was also out there at play group and then I hear that dreaded phone call that says or oh, some rogue person just went ballistic and, and opened fire at a kindergarten how devastated would I be and I wouldn't wish that on anyone that I know at all you know what I mean so people want to know where their money is actually going because for all we know you might be supporting somebody who is building a business so they can buy guns and those guns are gonna in turn kill your daughters and your sons, all right? People really need to see where their money is going. People really need to understand, is this person doing what they're doing for, for the greater good of humanity or are they just being selfish on their own? And if you're not showing people your, your everyday real life emotions, like what Scott is saying, seldom will they want to open up their hearts and their wallets to give you money. Because if they cannot see where their money is going, I can guarantee you right now that they are not going to be are comfortable in paying you for your services because they don't see where the money is actually going. So you want to be really, really careful in making your business more personable these days, especially, you know why? Because people can look you up. There's no more any reason for you to go and say, ah, oh, I'm the best in the field or I'm, you know, this thing is scientifically, scientifically proven to be the best. What are the results? How are you actually showing up to show that you're not just doing it for the money? You're not just a one click wonder. You see, you really are out there to help people. Hamid Zama, thank you so much for tuning in, all right? So today I'm going to be showing you the tricks that I've used throughout the year to actually connect with my own audience. And these tricks are really, really simple. One of them is just basically showing up like I'm doing right now every single day at 2 p.m. AEST, all right? Because then that then creates the need for me to be present in the market because now people anticipate this show, all right? What is it that you have that people are anticipating that you've been consistent about that people know that you're going to be there for them whenever they need you? That's all that people need. It's not about how good or how effective your service is. Are you going to be there tomorrow when they knock on your door or they need a service like yours? Because if you're not going to be there tomorrow, then there's no point in them investing in, in your service. And I would think right about now, this is the time when all those lazy, I'm going to call this and I said it, all those lazy women that are creating products that are supposed to be gifts for, you know, for people for Christmas, you know, the, the, the type that are like candles uh, or, you know, Christmas cards or whatever, Christmas decorations, you know, those people that just create, um, you know, stuff for gifts and only want to be seen when it's Christmas, Valentine's or Easter. Where have you been all year round? All right. And then they start making, putting you through a guilt trip and saying you have to buy local. You have to support Sally from down the road. But where was she last Christmas? Do you, do you understand the way, the logic of the people then, you know, when they're making those purchases? Or what if I make a purchase of that candle and it's not working and I want to return it? Do you want to put me through that guilt trip again? Because your, your son is no longer going to go to college. 
So you really want to make sure that you, you have established your business so that people actually really want to do business with you. You know why? They now know you. They now trust you're going to be there and they actually like what you're all about. Because if you're going to be doing business just by guilting people and saying, oh, support the locals or, you know, um, because every time you purchase something from Kmart or every time you purchase something from a well-established, um, you know, organization, um, you know, you, you're not sending Sally's son to school. But at the end of the day, look at this. When, where is Sally when I need her? Where is Sally when, when, when I'm looking around and searching? She only wants to react just because it's Christmas. What if I'm not religious? Does that mean I cannot pur purchase the things that she's selling? So you really want to make sure that what attracts people to you is your personality, not the services, not the time of the year or the time of the month and, and guilt people into wanting to purchase your, your commodities just because you are a local retailer. Is that, is that understandable? Because I'm going to start thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to buy my wife this nice candle. But what if it's not going to work? Or what if the scent, she, she, she reacts to it? If I'm going to go and return that to Sally, is Sally not going to look at me with that, with that guilt trip? Another thing that happens with local retailers as well. I'm not, I'm not taking a mickey on them. I'm just really trying to make sure that you understand it's not your products, it's not your services, it's your personality that people purchase from. Have you ever walked into one of those shows, uh, shops where you walk into it and then the bell automatically rings, ding ding, and everybody's on high alert? First of all, you're making your customers um, you know, you're making your customers feel insecure um, by them walking into that shop already. They're being, you know, everybody, every one of their moves is being looked at. And then you're looking at them, you as the shop owner, you know, you're looking at them through the top of your glasses and looking at what they've picked up. And let's still use candles. They've picked up a couple of candles and you're already calculating in your head, these candles are worth maybe $50 and this $50 will, will take off maybe $50 off the gas bill or the water bill that's sitting on my kitchen table. Do you understand how automatically you are chasing away um, you know, you know, you're chasing away your customers just by already calculating what their purchase is going to help you with. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, people really want to buy from you because you're cheerful, because you're really, really anticipating to help them, not because you want to pay a bill or you want to fulfill a need that because if that doesn't happen, your little boy Tommy won't go to college. So you really want to make sure your personality is at play 24-7 because that's what attracts people to you. If you're a happy person, people are happy to give you money. If you're going to be a sad, grumpy local retailer, don't expect people to come and, you know, trip, stumble and fall um, at your shop just because, yes, somebody has been posting about, you know, small retailers and how we should support um, the local people, you know? Building a brand ain't easy, and I know it's not, but you've got to really be intentional about it. And if you're going to be asking customers to give them, you know, because customers have a lot of choice. And if you're going to be let, asking them to give up their buying choice, um, you know, or buying preference to an entity in which you don't even have any emotional connection to, is that even fair? You're not even attached to your business long enough to see it through the whole year, but you want people to be guilted into buying from you just because some sort of holiday has a reason. You know, when you've got an emotional connection to your business and that automatically means you are also invested in the customers that come through to your business, you will retain those customers twice as much as somebody who's just doing it for the money. I understand. Yes, when you start your own business, you want to make your family better. You want, you know, to, to be able to, to, to have that, you know, standard of living, etc., etc. But don't guilt people into purchasing your products just because you have not been advertising all year round or you have not been invested in your business. I mean, this is easier said than done. You know, not every brand is going to be like Nike who's, you know, started off in a... Uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a trunk 
or you know, who started off elsewhere, and and you might not have all those positive stories, whatever it is, but it's still your business. Show the love, the care, and and you know the emotional connection to that business, and people will come in droves because they want to support what you 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 are you are putting out there. Now, Sally, uh, Sandy, sorry, Sandy says I focus on what the feeling is that they walk away with. Um, with other than interacting with me. Absolutely, you gotta know who your customers are, you gotta know what brought them to you, you know, and then make sure you, 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 you amplify those things in order to drive more people to you. Do you know what I mean? With that said, a lot of businesses that would have started up, um, you know, during this year, or maybe they are in going to their second year now, um, they sometimes just remain unidentifiable. Or they have taken on, because a lot of people that start businesses would have been in the corporate world, so they just take on the whole corporate way of doing things, of just having a logo and expecting people to just come and buy just because you're selling a service. You become unidentifiable. How are people going to remember you if you're not putting your own personal touch to the business? If you're not putting your own personal um, you know, touch to, to the way you conduct your business? You know, being personable, right, being, being yourself, your true authentic self and offering high quality products, this is what would make you curve out your own niche, right? And you won't have to compete for customers. You know why? Because people will come especially for you at that shop or in that business. Even if you're not a household name, people will seek you out. Because of your character, because of the way you, you are presenting yourself. But if you're only just putting out a logo every single day and people don't get to know who you are, how you feel or whatever it is that you actually do. How are people going to um, think of you when the time actually comes where they have to make that purchase from you? So there's no equation to, to whatever connection you might have to your customers. Be the business you want to represent. Make sure if you look at your business, would you look at it and say, I would buy stuff from this shop or I will buy something from this website. And Scott Woodrow says, customers feels like a winner. Absolutely. You want to make the customer feel wanted. You want to make the customer feel like they can come back again and again without being taken through a guilty trip. All right. So I think I've got about six things that I did this year that really helped me to get really, really close to my audience. And obviously the year is almost ended. So I think this is run about the time for every one of us to actually take stock of what you have done this year and what has worked and what hasn't worked. Robert says, I'm quite content to leave somebody feeling a little bit better um, about themselves than they did before they interacted with me. Absolutely. Because people already have everything they want to purchase, Robert. People already have everything they want in life. All right? But what they then purchase is connection. Is the thing they're going to buy connecting them any closer to yet another human. All right? So if they're buying a gift, is the gift going to make them connect to yet another human? Is it going to make them connect to you as a business owner? You need to facilitate all of that. Instead of just guilting people to say, buy from, um, you, know, um, you know, locally produced goods. If you're not providing the aftercare service, because if I buy something from, um, you know, if I buy something from Kmart, guess what happens? I know that I will always, um, you know, I will always um, return that thing if I don't need it anymore or if it's not needed. All right, so you want to make sure that you make the transactions as easy as possible for the people that are going to be purchasing from you. And make sure when people purchase from you, they're able to contact you and you're active via social media or some sort of connection. Because have you ever been to other people's websites and it's always just a one-way street of connecting with them? You, you can only contact them through a, uh, a contact us form. You know, some people don't feel that that's a personal way of reaching out to people. Have a personal profile that people can actually reach you out on and they see the way you live so that they know that their money is not going out there to support terrorist activities. Any good brand or any good business, you know, like what I'm doing right now, I'm showing up on my private profile. 
You need to have an active social media presence. Get people to know who you are. Get people to know what it is that you do with their money so that they are happy to give you more of it. I mean, obviously, I can understand some people are private individuals, but I can tell you something for nothing. I'm overly active on, on social media, but you only get to see what I want you to see. Nobody has time to scroll through your past or scroll through whatever you've been doing over the weekend. What you show them is what they get to see. And if you can just show them periodically what it is that you're doing, then they get to know you, like you and trust you. Great, tough. How's it going? I'll give you a call as soon as I'm finished with this, my man. All right. So even if you need, um, you know, you need to get to connect with the people that you're going to be demanding money off of. How are you going to know what it is that they need? And even if you've got a big enough budget as a small business, get a media, a social media specialist. It's really, really worth it. Somebody who sits, um, you know, on your mailbox or on your inbox 24-7 answering customer queries. Because it is now vital for you to be instantly available for your customers. Because if you're not, somebody else is out there with either a bot or somebody's out, out, out there, um, you know, ready to answer whatever questions your customers might have. So, you know, th there's quite a lot of platforms that can actually help you. There's things like Hootsuite, um, for example, not that I'm endorsing it, but it can help you, you know, stay in constant touch with your sort of customers and you can get the analytics of what are people actually responding to and you can give them more of that. Because people are coming to the internet to either connect with other people and to buy goods and services. So if they're not yet buying from you, they need that connection. Are you affording them to connect with you first so that they see where their money is going? At the end of the day, this social media game will help you connect with, with, with their friends, their relatives. Do you know what I mean? They might not be your real customer, but they might know somebody who might pay you in the future. So why not, um, you know, participate in making sure that they get to know you enough to refer you to people that they trust? Because I wouldn't refer somebody to, um, you know, somebody I haven't spoken to. What if they go there and then, you know, they, 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 they're invited to a van that, that, that has a sign saying hugs um, come inside or something like that. Nobody wants their relatives or their friends to be hurt. So you want to make sure you are showing face, you are showing who you are. If you think you are too ugly or you are not good enough for social media, find an intern or somebody who can be the face of your brand and connect that person to the everyday activities of your brand. Because if people don't know where their money is going, it's going to be difficult for them to part with it. And half of the times... Like what I'm doing right now. Try and just go live on Facebook. You know? Show them what, what it is that you're doing. Show them how the things that you're creating are made. Connect with the customers. Create the stories around your products. You know what? If you're a candle maker, you know, you can just leave your phone on here live while you're mixing all the oils and all the herbs, etc., etc. People just want to connect with the product that they're going to purchase. You know? Have you ever seen those magicians that go on the street? You know, they invite people into their circle, right? They, they make people part of their audience in as much as people want to be involved in war. People will only support something they helped to build. So if people are allowed to be there and watch you make those dresses, watch you make those candles, watch you make those drinks, they feel like they're part of it. They can trust that these things are actually being manufactured by you over on your, on your blood, sweat and tears and they would want to support that. So that's why social media right now, Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, what's that other one? All those other platforms, they're making it harder and harder for people to be poor these days. If you can facilitate real time voice and video chat like what we have right now, do you know what I mean? On your, on your website or on, on social media or whichever way, you give them an option to show them you're actually accessible, you're actually a human being and you're somebody who's sitting there and trying to, uh, you know, solve their problems. You know? Because people, you can't tell people you are the best, you're the best in the world right now. They can always look you up. 
If anyone has a question, you know what I mean? They can answer you right there. And then once they do that, they actually understand and know that you're the right kind of person who can fix their, their problem pronto, pronto. Good day, Mike. How's it going, man? Hope you're having a fantastic week so far. It's the last day of November and it's almost December. I hope you're all uh, ready for, for the Christmas break. Do you know what I mean? So that way, customers gain the confidence that you're actually talking to an actual person who's not going to take their money and go and buy guns and maim their kids at a kindergarten. And who's also attending to their needs and is viscerally invested in their own success. So that's how you personify your brand. Nobody wants to buy from a logo these days. This is exactly what you're doing to the people and it's disrespectful. Because if people can't see who they're giving money to or who it is that they're talking to, you're just really disrespecting the people that are going to be affording you the lifestyle that it is that you want to look for. You know, we all want, you know, happiness. We all want a life that's, you know, profitable and enjoyable. But for us to have that, we have to connect with people that have wallets, needs and wants that we can satisfy. So once you, you get in touch with your, your, your audience like this, they get to know who you are. And they get to understand, you know, what your, 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 your niche is, what they really want. And then you can actually help them by actually helping them. And uh, Mike says, you need a tip jar. <laughs> Great stuff. Not a problem, man. You know, um, every day I do this, I really want people to actually really win in this game. So my tip is when people come back to me and say prosper because of your video or prosper because of your, um, you know, everyday motivation, I did not give up. And I get that a lot. So thank you so much for recognizing. You know what I mean? So if you strive to always be present for your customers, they will also do the same for you. People are always looking for places to belong. You know? So do everything that you can to ensure that your brand is always, uh, you know, in sight. Because out of sight, out of mind. And you know what? At the end of the day, even if you get a bad bout of bad publicity, people have already committed to liking you. There's no way they're going to turn against you. So don't even worry about what, um, you know, if, if anything goes wrong on a live or people are going to laugh at you. They are actually really sitting there and hoping that they too can become who you have become. And then the more they get engaged with your content, your, your stuff or whatever it is that you're giving out there, the more they know you, like you and trust you. And the closer you are to the camera in 2018, the closer you are to the bank. You know, so whether you're selling basketball shoes or whether you're selling a software or whether you're selling candles or whatever it is you're selling, there's going to be a specific market that will be attracted to your products. Your products, okay, but they can get them elsewhere. You want to make sure they're attracted to you first as the person. And when you go about designing your website, be the person that is going to purchase from you. And when you publish your content on social media, just keep in mind that this market is people just like you and me. All right. And you're speaking to people that also really are invested in the success of your business. One other thing that I did this year was being consistent, guys, and it has paid me off so much. Um, I can count. I think I did about five or six speaking engagements. Um, I run my own show um, and I, I, well, I don't really talk about money because at the end of the day, that's not what we're here for. I know we're here to make money, but I did well this year, <laughs> way better than all the other years that I've done um, before. So thank you all. Thank you all for the support. You know, you got to be consistent because people, people out there are confused. People are not understanding what's going on. And if you're going to be the, um, the lighthouse, all the boats that are in the storm will know just to look at the light and follow that light up until they get to shore. Do you know what I mean? In every aspect of your branding, consistency is key. People have what is called, you know, visual destruction. There's a lot of visual diarrhea in everywhere we go. 500,000, um, uh, 500,000, um, you know, brands are trying to advertise to the one person. 
That means you have to be available at all times to just maintain contact with your customers. So that they know wherever they're going to go, you will always be there. And this can be done through an engaging email list, a good blog, a really, really good show like this one here. I, I think, I don't know if anybody else has been consistent like this. If Mark Zuckerberg is going to be giving awards, please nominate me. Because I know I have done my part. If I haven't gotten 300 or so videos out there that are all 30 minutes, that are all jam-packed with content, because I really pledge to be consistent this year. And the amount of reviews and, and, and reports and feedback that I'm getting from people saying, brah, because of you, I haven't given up. And everybody knows that at 2 p.m., no matter what they're doing, if they just tune in, I will be there delivering. Go by Langton, did he say? I hope you're having a fantastic day, brother. You know? Remember though, consistency is only good if you're actually consistently hitting the right notes. Don't be consistently putting out crap out there. So if your strategy isn't working, don't feel like you have to hold on to it. You know what I mean? Just make sure you're doing what people actually want. Listen out for feedback. Find ways to tweak it, shape it, and refine your branding message up until you've got it right. And practice makes it perfect. You know? Practice, 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 practice. Right now, I can, I can show up eating chicken, you know, or start my video at any point, and I can still go in, you know? Because now I know what I'm supposed to talk about. All I have to do is just relate what my blueprint has to offer. And that's all I do. Because now I'm consistent with my branding, with my messaging. And also one other thing, don't wait for people to come to you. Reach out. You know, like if you notice, I've got a show that I interview, um, you know, other entrepreneurs every single day. I reach out to people and I'm like, hey, would you like to be on my show? Because I'm offering value. I don't want to be the only, you know, uh, broken record that, that you guys can hear. So I'm reaching out to other people and it's also a form of networking. The closer you are to many people knowing about what you do and what you do it, the closer you are to the bank. Because if people don't know what you sell or what it is that you do, how are they going to refer people to you? So how are you going to connect with people if they actually don't actually know who you are or what it is that you serve? If you're not personable enough. Now, can you imagine if I spend the whole year with just a logo and all you could see was maybe that blue thing in front and you didn't even know what I looked at, looked like or you didn't even know what I did. Do you think you'll still be watching any of my videos? And that's what everybody else is doing. They're just showing, you know, a picture of their logo and they're hoping that people will just purchase from them. Why? Because they're a small business owner. You know? So while your online experience goes, you know, a long way, it goes far further if you actually reach out to people, reach out to your customers and reach out to influencers, that will also help you reach out to people that you cannot reach out on your own. You know? So you really, you know, depending on whatever level of your service, make sure you've got other ambassadors, make sure you've got, you know, other, you know, people that are loyal to your brand that will create those relationships and spread your authority while you're branding yourself in your community. That was, that was really good. <laughs> Even I'm impressed with that. Yeah, it's like, it's like a rhyme, isn't it? You know, because I know my stuff so well, I'm so consistent with it, you know? So ultimately, your, your ability to be personable and to connect with customers, because they're the ones that are going to be counting the money and, and, and sending it across to you. You know? Because people, people are tired of w waking up in the morning and hearing on the news, oh, 50 people have been shot dead down the street. Because they don't understand where the money is all coming from. What if it's just some, you know, entrepreneur who's sitting on the other side getting people's money and then going out and buying guns and then using those guns against people? You know? I don't want to make that visual, but then what if that is what is happening? You know? So really look at how are you connecting with the people? Are people really knowing who you are? And if you're putting in real effort, if you're putting in real strategies to connect with your customers, your suppliers and other people that can help you move your brand, first of all, you will refine your message, you will refine your audience, and then you won't have to spray and pray. 
Because you now know who exactly listens and understands your message. Because just sitting on your own and looking at your website and, and hoping that people are going to come to it, it's, it's not like that anymore. So if you want to find yourself a loyal customer base, go out and seek people that really, really like you. That will take your business to greater heights. I really want to help you. I really hope that every time I finish talking to you, um, you, 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 you go in and look at what I've just talked about because I really want you to create an online footprint and optimize your business for growth. All right. And you know what? I really want you to build systems within your business so that it starts operating on autopilot. Because once you start knowing yourself, people start sharing your content. You know what I mean? You start generating leads and, and revenue just because people actually know who you are, etc., etc. So thank you so much. And if you've been watching this for the first time, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really enjoy making these videos. And if you enjoyed watching this and you think somebody within your network might also enjoy this, um, just share this video for me. Because at the end of the day, for me, it's no longer a popularity contest, bruh. Do you know what I mean? I'm good. I've, I've made it. All right. I really want to help people to succeed. I really want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And I'm going to do this up until maybe, I don't know. I don't know what's going to change my mind, but I'm on a mission to build a hundred million dollar company and it's going to happen in four stages. So this is just the beginning. So if you're tired of me right now, then you might not be in my tribe. All right. But we are in it for the long haul. I hope that's what you also wish for your business. I hope that's what you wish for your family and everybody else that's around you. All right. I also want to help you win. I want to grow with you. I want you to grow in as much as you possibly have never imagined because it's possible. I don't know if you guys know, I'm just from Zimbabwe, man. Born with nothing. Came over here and now we, we're spitting and we're really, really making sure that my business is profitable and I'm enjoying working in it. I want that for you too. All right. So if there's anything I can do to help you, let a brother know. But please, please, please be seen, be seen in your true glory out there. Because at the end of the day, um, you're, you're here to make a difference. Your own life story is totally different to everybody else out there. So you're only just being selfish by not showing up. Look at my fingers right here, man. No fingers are the same height. And if I didn't have any one of these fingers, wouldn't I look crooked? So the world is missing you right there, bruh. All right? Do good. All right? And good will come to you. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll catch you guys tomorrow if I'm available. I've just seen an email that came through. They might want me back at the ABC studios. But if I'm around tomorrow, we'll continue this. And if you've got any questions, let a brother know in the comments below. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day.